Get him again, Joe. Oh, my. What's up, everybody out there in, in media land? <laughs> Welcome to the first the episode, the historical groundbreaking first episode of the Really time. Real Show with John and West. I'm West. This is my partner, John, and we are recording live from the Jamaican flavor right here in Decatur, Georgia, on Georgia. the east side. Come down here and get your junk chicken on, your oxtails, your cocoa bread, this whatever. Well, let's get um, started. But we, we, we got a real interesting show for you today. But before we get started, I'm going to go ahead and let John tell y'all what the Really Real Show is all about. All right, thank you, Wes. The Really Real Show. It's a real life show. Entertaining show focusing on real life issues. I want to be dead serious when I say that. Real life issues we focusing on. We also hit you with the music videos. We got some very special guests coming up. We got to hit you with the sports and entertainment news. We know y'all can't do without that. Right, right. A little too much to be without that. Like, go we crazy. Also, we also got a, some com comedic skits for you, man, that's going to keep you rolling, I guarantee, man. But right now, I want you to think about the one term for conscious progressive thought. If you're not familiar with that time right now, keep watching the Really Real Show. You get real familiar with it real quick. Right now, we're going to take a brief intermission. Our first break of the season. Woo, big time Woo, break. Big time, time break. break. Big time break. And when we come back, we have our very special guest. First guest of the season. So you know she's very special. Nefertiti and the Neptunes when we come back. A whole lot more Really Real Show after this. This is the Really Real Show with John and Wes. Really real. Once again, I'm Wes. This is my co-host, John. And <clears throat> we are glad to present to you, everybody out there in laptop internet land, cell phone land, TV, web TV land. We are glad to present to you our very first special guest. Very special, Very special man. Nefertiti and the Neftos. What's going on Absolutely. with you, man? Man, everything's going on, man. Just having a real good day, a real good life, and living life the way I want to do it. Really real. Really, man. Really real. Really real. Really real. Really real. Really real. <laughs> but first, I'll tell everybody out there who Nefertiti and the Neftos is. Oh, man, it's a crazy question. Nefertiti and the Neftos is basically my expression of, of my life and how I feel about life, you know what I mean? It's like, I, people see, that particular game Neptunes is me right here, I don't have a band, I just basically do what I do, but the way I do it, I feel like in my head when I'm on stage, it's a whole 20 piece band on stage doing my thing with me, and that's how I approach my music and my creativity. So that's Neptune and Neptunes, everything. And that's, that's like so so what, what style of music would you say you do? Um, I call my music acoustic gangsters, actually. Alright, you gotta you gotta you gotta explain that to us. I never heard acute acoustic gangsterism before. Acoustic gangsterism is like a nigga who walk up with a guitar case, but from like El Dorado. It's actually a gun. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? I, I think I can get the get the picture. And if you can get that gist, you know what I'm saying? It's basically acoustic music with an edge to it, you know what I mean? And um 
we really just try to, well, who's we? Neptune and Neptune, okay. <laughs> we really just try to, like, you know, say the unexpected, do some things that people don't really expect. You see somebody, you know, people don't know what to make of it. I come on stage, I got a guitar, like, oh, what you about to sing? Or what you about to do about to rap? A lot of people think I rap, too, but I sing. You know, a lot of rap lyrics in it, you know what I'm saying? Like, people that you would think it would be a rap lyric, and I like to sing it, just to know people off a little bit. So, so, who would you say your inspiration are? Music wise, just just period. It's life. Yeah. Oh man, life period is an inspiration in itself. Just watching people and the way people live and love and you know what makes us happy, what makes us sad, and I don't know, just the way we relate to each other. And then that I think that I can like, I have solutions sometimes. You know what I'm saying? So I just offer them up in this way, like a, a song. You know what I mean? So. Uh, as far as artists go, Curtis Mayfield, Lauren Hill, beautiful, Jill Scott, beautiful, Lil Wayne, Jill Tupac, Scott. awesome, Jimi Hendrix, awesome. I mean, the list really, really, really goes on as far as artists because I, I draw inspiration from music itself. You know what I mean? It doesn't even have to be one kind of genre or, or sort of sort of artist. You know? Okay, cool. So, um, where can we find your material? Good question. Neptune and Neptune.com. Um, it's my main website. I'm also on Twitter, Neptune, Facebook. But if you want to just hear some music, go to Neptune and Neptune.com. What else you got? Um, I got the CCC, aka the Creative Culture Collective, aka the Collective Open Mic every Friday at Jamaica Flavor Indicator, 2440 West of Chapel Road. That's where we are right now, representing on the east side as West. On so location. Beautifully symbolized for us, you know what I'm saying? Um, and it's just a really started. great thing. I'm, a, I'm exactly right. I'm the host. And I'm the promoter, and it's just like a really fun time. Just learning about myself in the scope of artistry here, indicator in the Greater Metro Atlanta area, and that's really dope. And I mean, I just I've got a lot of collaborations out there with some really nice artists that I'm looking forward to, to hearing and really coming out. And um, yeah, and hopefully my project comes. That's real. That's real. That's real. That's real. But uh, we're gonna take a quick break, and we're gonna come right back at you with our forum. We got a real live live forum. Uh, real, be right back. Really real show with Johnny West. Welcome back. This is the really real show with Johnny West. Um, again, I'm West. This is my partner, John, and this is our special guest, Nefertiti and the Neftoons. Um, this part of our show is our forum, and today's forum. We got some real interesting topics today. Uh, our first topic, we're gonna be talking about what does it really take? What does it really mean to be a real black man? A real black man. What do it take? What do it, what do it mean to y'all? Uh, we're just gonna start it off right now. John, what, what would you say does it mean to be a real black man? What I'm going to do right from the get-go, what it takes to be a real black man, if y'all can picture it with me, take the black out of the statement. Just cross it out, erase it, get rid of it, whatever you want to do with it, and just what it takes to be a real man, period. Because I think, you know, I think a lot of black dudes in particular just got a, they just got an identity concept that they just confused right now. Just got a lot going on trying to figure out who they are, man, but... I want to start out with just being responsible, man. That's that's where I got to start. You, know, that shit, man. you got to be a responsible person, man. Whether you're a man or a woman or you know, whatever you may be, you know what I'm saying? If you're a person, you got to be responsible, man. Being responsible, I'm sure everybody know what that means, but in a nutshell, you got to if, take care of yourself first of all, man. If you're a single man, you're a single woman, and you're an adult, you got to be able to take care of yourself. You got to be able to take care of your kids if you don't want out there and make kids. You're taking care of your wife or your husband, or your wife in particular being a black man. You know what I'm saying? And the rest of your family, if necessary. Take care of whoever you need to take care of, man, to get things done, get business, handled. man. It's the bottom line. And another thing coming along with responsibility is you're not, you're not out there living a life of crime. That's not responsible. You ain't robbing people, <laughs> killing people, robbing up, robbing stores, opposite. shooting up. Yeah, pretty much. You know what I'm saying? And, and I think it's just <laughs> overall not being an ignorant motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? It's still my language a little bit, right. but just... Just not being ignorant, man. The ignorance I see going on nowadays is is kind of unreal. You know what I'm saying? How it's accepted. You know what I'm saying? People be ignorant all the time, but the the fact that the audience is like embraces it. You know what I'm saying? Like embraces the ignorance. Like that's that's one thing I'm I'm not so, getting into a little so bit. On that note, now, like as a woman, how would you like? What are your thoughts on this topic? Like, how do you view 
males nowadays. And then, like, as a woman, what would you say your expectations are like, as far as a real man? Um, I think that I, my definition of a real black man or a real man period is, is one that's going to do whatever it takes to take care of himself and his family. And um, that's pretty much it, you know, whatever it takes. And I, and I don't condone any criminal things, but I, I think that being a real man, I think uh, it really lends itself to planning that shit out and really making sure that even if you're doing something criminal, is that in the long term going to be what's best for your entire family? You know what I mean? Yeah, so you, you do whatever it takes, but you're a man, so you think about these things, you think it through, you plan it out well. Progressive thought. Indeed, progressive. Masculine energy is a forward moving energy. Is a, I want to say penetrate, it's a penetrative energy. So what you do is you move forward and do what's going on. In, in life. I, I, I like the males do penetrate. I like that. I know that's everybody's favorite topic in, in TV world land or internet space land. Dating and relationships. My question is, what constitutes as a committed relationship? You want to take that or you want me to try to dive in on well, that? And some, somebody tell me what a committed relationship is. Because I, I, I don't know. I got a little something on it. Uh, one where you made a commitment to be with that person and each party understands what that commitment means uh, for the for the for the relationship like and not that. necessarily the individual. Touched on that cool. honesty a little bit. Long as both parties know somewhat know what we what's both going into or what right. we both got ourselves into, it right, should right. be pretty decent. Yeah. So so is it possible to be in this committed relationship and still see and mess around with other people, mainly sexual. Going back to what I said, it depends on what the commitment is between the two people. You know what I mean? And my understanding is, I don't know. I don't think it's okay for everybody. And I can't say that it's not okay for other people. You know what I mean? But it goes back to what commitment you made to uh, the relationship that you have and what, you know, both parties want to get out of it and, and give to it. See me when you asked that question, I was looking for my girlfriend. Wow. <laughs> no, no, <Never>. no, <laughs> no extra people in the relationship. None. Girl, there, are many many people in girlfriend. there are many people in committed relationships who have that understanding in their relationship that it's okay to do that because they understand their commitment between each other. But that if, if y'all commitment, if you know you, you know what I'm saying, your girlfriend is just not whatever commitment, nigga, you with me. And that's it. Then it ain't no point in even trying to play around with it. But it, yeah. there are, you know, people. Of course, we know there are more forms of relationship than not to me. So there are people who are able to make that commitment and understand what a, the relationship is and what their purpose is. I mean, but is it, is it like possible? Is it realistic to see something like that work? I was just about to say that. I haven't personally. Seen I was just about to say yes, that. It, 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 it sounds like. It seems like it would be, you know what I'm saying, good and, and legit from the get-go, but from most women I've seen, from the majority or had encountered or paid any attention to, they, they don't want to share that man. I don't care if at the beginning of the relationship they sign a contract that says, share the dick. you know what I'm saying, I'm going to be with these people, you're going to be with these people. After a while, it's going to either be you or me. And you know, I, I, think, it'll, I think it'll cause more problems and force one of them to get out of it before it right. can produce into anything really serious, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. on the, along the lines of a marriage or anything of that nature. Because I, women don't like to share their men. I know men don't like to share their men. Oh, no. So it's something's gonna, it's gonna be a breaking point sooner than later, I think, anyway, in, the, in, that, in, that, in that form of trying to have a relationship that way. Okay, well, this, this is a perfect segue into our next time. Is it possible to find a mate on, on, on the Facebook, on the Black Planet. On the book, as y'all call it. The book. book. <laughs> the book totally threw me it's, it's, it's double. It's it's double. double. Is, 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 that, is that possible? I mean, can you oh, okay. honestly look like a, a wholesome mate being male or female? Well, are you wholesome and are you online? You know what I'm saying? Are 
And if you, okay, so. No, nope. and yes. <laughs> right, okay, I'm online. <laughs> well, there you go. But uh, I think that it's, uh, I think that what people forget, right? Because we sit on our computers, we're on social networks all over the day. And we think that we're talking to computers. But um, what I've learned, especially through marketing and doing my music, that it's people 